let me get back into the idea of why I decided to make this particular video. And that was starting with the October 26, 2014 article entitled, Holiday Takes a Hit in Schools, Religious Roots, Secular Festivities, by Susan Carlson of the Hartford Current. Newington officials caused a stir by eliminating all remaining Halloween celebrations for elementary schools last year. And an important quote that I would like to share with you from the article states, costume parades exclude children whose religion prohibits Halloween celebrations, has raised the question, is Halloween a secular opportunity for children to dress up and have fun or a religious celebration masquerading as a costume party. What do you think with all this background information about Judaism and Jehovah's Witnesses and the Celtic custom from history and various other takes on Halloween? Is it a secular opportunity or is it a costume party? Who knows? But the idea of it being innocuous, I tend to agree with that. If children are taught how to dress up responsibly when they're young, it would have less issues by the time they get to college. And if you remember in my history at Central Connecticut State University, there was a student who forgot to get changed and had a terrorism scare based on his Halloween costume. The policy letter from Newington states the religious symbols may be used in the context of teaching about a particular religion or celebration but not as classroom decorations. And students may use religious symbols in artwork, but teachers must be careful not to instruct their students to do so. Now, as a substitute teacher, I remember it being in the lesson plan to have students write short stories about Halloween, but this presented a problem for my students who were Jehovah's Witnesses because they weren't allowed to write works of fiction. If this is part of the curriculum, how do we work around that? Nowadays, it's no longer part of the curriculum. Students can write anything and they choose to write personal stories. Maybe in their free time, if they're so inclined, they would write fictional stories, but never Jehovah's Witnesses to write those. And what about the carving of the pumpkins, the coloring of jack-o'-lanterns? That idea has been another kiboshed idea because it's a secular holiday. They can color pumpkins without faces because pumpkins themselves are just vegetables. But to add the face, adds the horror, adds cultural ideas that are of a secular nature. The next article really hit home for me because a lot of parents in Newington were very upset about the new policy. They want their kids to enjoy the Halloween parties and they accused policymakers in Newington of political correctness. And to have a fall festival or fall party seemed a little off to them. Well, the reason that I chose to wear this particular outfit for this video is it's the closest thing I could get to one of the references I wanted to make to my own personal life. Parents believe that their kids should do everything they did and they celebrated every holiday growing up. 
When I was a child in elementary school, we used to have parades where we would walk around the front of our school dressed in any costume. And my mom was kind of shamed for buying costumes for me. So that year, she created a bear costume and she was a terrible sewer. I love her anyway. And she made these floppy ears, got in my face. I couldn't see anything and it was a big mess, but I was so proud of her and I loved her. And having that memory means the world to me. It makes me closer to my mother. It makes me remember being a child, having fun and doing something outside of the classroom during a school day. That was important to me. So I understand where parents in Newington were coming from. And I'm glad to say that they got away with a picture I'm going to show you from their website. So these are their kids from last year. It's coming up sooner rather than later. And in an opinion piece from November 2nd of last year, Halloween flap triggers outbreak of idiot idiocy. Colin McEnroe wrote how Ebola is difficult to catch, but idiocracy spreads like wildfires. And that's true. Halloween was not canceled. The students, as you see, did get a chance to dress up. Some alternatives that I know from being on the other side of the desk and seeing how some school systems have suggested to students are dressing as your favorite character from books or um, dressing as your hero. And this means that no one is going to dress as a zombie, a witch, or things that would offend the Jehovah's Witnesses or the um, Orthodox Jewish students. But might I also remind you of another event in my young life. When I was in fifth grade, my teacher, Mr. Farr, gotta love him, he had us break into groups and create a haunted house in our classroom for the younger grades to come and observe and for us to scare them. And it was good because we worked on our communication skills. We worked together to determine the best course of action in order to make a scary scene and develop our characters as part of the scene. I remember not having much money to make a costume. I didn't want to ask my parents to buy me a costume, so I basically wrapped myself in toilet paper and called myself a mummy. And some of the kids who weren't afraid went and when I was trying to scare them and grab them, they slapped my hand, gave me five, and it was all a joke. We weren't trying to really scare them, but to have this concept and try to work towards a common goal was something important to us. So even though this doesn't really um, connect with the article, I like the idea that Halloween was never canceled and it can't really be canceled for a town that embraces it. So for those of you that have other religious beliefs, see if you can join in in a way that won't hurt your religion and gain some of these skills that I talked about working together communicating, maybe charity like from the previous video in the Jewish culture. Check it out. 
Thanks for watching my video and please subscribe.